your own self be true, be exceptional. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. In everything you say. Every way be exceptional. Be exceptional. Oh, be exceptional. Be exceptional. It's not in everything. You will see. It's not in everything that you've been told. It's not in everything you thought you'd be. It's not in everything you have bought and sold. Be exceptional. It's not in everything that you will see It's not in everything that you've been told Not in anything you have bought and sold. Be exceptional. To your own self be true. Be exceptional. In everything you do, be exceptional. Be exceptional. Welcome to Geo Up, Over, and Down Under. I'm Rose. And I'm Kat. A fine balance is required to navigate the, the current state of awakening. Some on this journey walk a tight rope of emotion while navigating this, the minefield of information. Many succumb to the anger and lower vibing realities. But some walk the path seemingly untouched. And today, our guest is one of the latter. Yaro is the eyes, heart and ears of the Southern Hemisphere's quake zones. He's better known to the virtual world as YouTuber Whether or Not. Yaro is based in Australia and the singer-songwriter has spent many years awakening humanity with his ample talent and huge heart. Welcome Yaro. Uh, thank you very much for having me on your show. It's, uh, it's an honour. A very important uh, message to get out to people about what is happening uh, all around the world with the chemtrailing and that I prefer not to call it geoengineering. To me, that's almost giving it credence and saying that it's okay, that it's scientific and it's okay. It's not okay to manipulate the weather. It's not okay to manipulate natural energies. Uh, we resonate uh, on a particular energy, uh, so does the earth, so does the atmosphere. And when we start playing with that, we're taking from one part and putting it into another which which causes uh, extremes uh, and as we've seen uh, the extremes in weather uh, that have happened here in Australia in New Zealand you know, all over the place uh, it, it is horrific it's not geoengineering it, it's foolishness uh, to the highest degree I believe so very grateful to um, have this opportunity to to share and to to walk Walk with you guys. 
Thank you. We certainly appreciate you joining us today, Yaro. I like the way that you have laid that out. Uh, there are many, many in this game that uh, insist on it being called geoengineering. Uh, the lovely Rosalind Peterson, of course, is one of them. And I understand that for um, the part in this that she's playing because she's dealing with the higher ups. She's, you know, she's worked with people uh, in the UN, etc. So as soon as they hear the word chemtrailing, that you're cast as a, a conspiracy theorist. But in saying that, what you have said is is completely true. It is not all right. It no. is not all right to be doing what what they are doing. Yeah, you know, when you hear that they would, they avoid anybody uh, calling it chemtrailing, uh, and they're they're trying to guide society into calling it geoengineering, and then you see these um, news reports uh, calling it geoengineering, you know that we're being given, um, we're being duped into that, and it's very important not to be controlled and not to be manipulated in that way, and we call it like it is. And it's not geoengineering. It's foolishness. Certainly is playing with nature this way. There's air assholes. <laughs> Sorry. It's more appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. so, thank you. You're just speaking to a crew that can completely appreciate that. Yeah. So okay. I see in you, uh, we've had a bit of excitement in the last few days, haven't we, Yado? You've been the eyes for us down under here. Um, there were... Harp started pinging again um, a couple of days back, and she was on full bolt. So the last last two days, we have just seen her screaming. There's been a couple of times where she's been taken offline. Be interesting to see the data that's missing uh, during that time. Now, one of the members on the contrail, of course, keeps a really close eye on on this. Harp let go just a little while ago, so um, at about the same time that the quake, the big quake happened up in Gisborne, Harp had just let go then. So uh, off the coast of Gisborne, we had several quakes, and you were alerting us to those uh, through through that period, through the last few days. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that, Yaro? Well, um, yes, yeah, sure. Uh, and, you know, I'm not a professional all I do is observe, and uh, if I see something that's possibly worthwhile uh, letting people know about, then I'll do it. I've been watching radars and that type of stuff for, for almost 10 years. When I saw the three uh, quakes ca coming up, I knew that there was, regardless of what had started it, I knew that there was going to be an impact coming because there's a lot of energy now that needs to be expressed in there. So... That's what alerted me to uh, you know, put the first, the first one up. Now, when I put the first one up, what I did notice was that 10 hours before um, these, uh, the last lot of three quakes, there was a quake that wasn't reported. And that alerted me straight away to, OK, we, we better watch this very closely. Uh, when you get a quake of that size not being reported, then it, it's going to be for a reason. What may happen is that it will turn up, and I've seen this happen before, it'll turn up a little bit later on uh, in the, the listing. Uh, so I'll, I'll be watching for that one. I don't normally talk on that because uh, then it alerts the, uh, them to with the different games that are played. But that's what happened. Um, I knew that there was going to be a, um, another large one, a large event, so... As they were building, I just thought, okay, we'll put another video out and another video out. It's not my favourite thing to, um, to scare people in that way, but I think it's very important to let people know that a lot of these events are readable uh, before they happen. As you said, one of the uh, alerts, I didn't actually fully know that HARP was up and running to the capacity that it was. So it's very interesting, even not knowing that, was being uh, pushed out that uh, you can still read the signs to say, yes, there is going to be a, a, a big event. Yes. Um, and possibly there, there still will be uh, in between the two islands um, because there's still energy yet to be expressed. And it's my usual area. 
that I am concerned about is um, the Wanganui region. Uh, that's on the North Island, but also uh, Blenheim, is it? Is that how you say that? Blenheim, yeah. We, we call it Nam, like Vietnam, because they spray so much up there. Yep. Okay, that's another uh, area. It, it's in between uh, the two islands. They're the areas of concern for me, which then will impact uh, Wellington a, a very big way. Now, we've also, I think we've had a, a fairly small one um, just east of Seddon, which is close to the areas that we're talking about. So it is an area to watch. There's still quite a bit of energy to be expressed there. On the video, what I did point out to people with the uh, seismogram is that the, uh, the energy, the, the line on the graph was still quite thick. So I did say, look, it, it hasn't finished expressing itself yet, this energy, and there will be a, a rather large event to come. Uh, and that's one of the ways to read these uh, graphs, the radars, all of that type of stuff. There is ways to read it. Um, they do change, unfortunately. They change the technology. Uh, we've just got to adjust to then rereading it again and working out how to, to see. I did notice in your last video that uh, the drum readings were different. Uh, now, have they been changing them at GeoNet, Yaro, they, or is this normal that, that you get one screenshot of the drums and then the next time you look at it, it's changed again? What's it's going changed. on there? My understanding is that the drums can't change. That's a seismogram uh, and it can't change. But as you saw in the uh, videos, it changed from one video to the next video to the next one. Uh, the first one showed a definite large quake. The second one showed a toned down version and the third one even further toned down. Now, it's not because it was 10 hours. It doesn't tone them down. It shows exactly what happened at that time. So it was a little bit concerning seeing these, this first event, which wasn't reported, uh, slowly disappear from the, um, the drums. I have seen on a couple of occasions uh, that before. Right. It was good to actually capture it as it happened and then can show, look, this is the gradual demise of what is supposed to be a signature of earthquakes. And that's another thing to um, get to know, get to know the signatures of the earthquakes and you get to see them on the uh, seismogram. Uh, the really uh, interesting thing was that there is a connection from the uh, Bay of Plenty region and the northeast coast all the way through to uh, Whanganui, whereas the, um, the movements in the earth don't seem to affect too much the middle region, Taupo, and, and that. It's almost like a direct link from uh, the Bay of Plenty, north coast, northeast coast region, straight into Whanganui, which is your uh, Rapahui. Yes, Rupehu. Um, the, yeah, the, the area that you're talking about down there is very heavily hit. Tar Taranaki, uh, all these areas are constantly being chemtrailed. We have been watching the flight recorders and um, the, planes, the planes are coming over from Sydney and Melbourne saying that they're landing at Wellington and then they don't land, they turn around and they go back again. Or they'll come down, come down from Auckland, and you know the flight recorder will say that they are going to Wellington or Christchurch, and then they do this crazy. Uh, I don't know. They go back and come come back down the island and go back. I mean, we've just watched this time and time again. So the people, the area that you're talking about, Wanganui, Taranaki, they are just slammed down there. And of course, the area of Ruapehu is where one of our largest military bases is here in New Zealand. So um, Waiuru is where where this, this area is. Now, I had friends come down uh, recently from Auckland and, you know, they're very, very sensitive people. And they said that they don't even know what's going on here. And they said they got the strangest, sleepiest feeling when they hit Waiuru. Um, both of them driving separate cars, um, you know, just were quite keen to pull off the road. You know, they were they were quite flabbergasted by the, the sleepy feeling that came over them through that area. And, yeah. of course, <clears throat> you know, the frequencies that, that are coming out of these arrays uh, could well, well, you know, explain what's happening to them there. 
it was it was a bit of a shock for them. And, uh, you know, they did a good report coming down through the island. Uh, they were very, very glad to get to the South Island. So, But but it's interesting that, you know, uh, you know, Wellington, 10 years ago, a little bit longer actually, I was involved with a presentation to the uh, New Zealand Earthquake Commission where they said that a quake – you know, a quake would happen within 10 years and it would absolutely devastate Wellington. And, that, and that's actually when I left the area because there were only two ways out of Wellington and uh, both of them along the major fault lines. And I realised that, you know, I wouldn't be able to even get to my daughter uh, within, you know, it would take three days to get to her where she was in childcare. So, you know, it was a no-brainer for me. That's 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 when I, I moved out and I started looking a little bit closer at, at earth changes and what was going on around us. So, but it's interesting to me that none of this has really been happening to Wellington. Wellington seems to be being shielded from that. I would like to think so, but possibly, you know, there's a lot of attention being drawn to Christchurch. Uh, mm. Mm. But I, I really, for me, uh, my feeling is that, that it's more a, a Wellington event, possibly. Um, the fact that what you've just said uh, with the uh, Earthquake Commission, that um, there is possibility of one there, that just confirms more or less what I, what I feel mm. with that mm -hmm. area. Now, um, the other thing is, you know, when we're looking at the earthquakes, I'll go through what, what I do see my first indicator, as you know, uh, and possibly the others uh, may not know, is around Rao Island. Now, sometimes they call this south of Fiji. If we get a six to seven, we know that there's going to be round, possibly round about uh, a five, uh, four to five magnitude earthquake in the Bay of Plenty region. But if it is above seven, then that puts me on a big alert for uh, what I call a consequential shift further south. And you'll hear me talk about this consequential shift. All it is is that there's been a big one in uh, Rail Island, or they call it the Kermatic region. So you look for a big one there. When a big one happens there, it's almost uh, a surety that you're going to get consequential shifts further down, down south. Um, uh, this has happened on numerous occasions. So... It's Bay of Plenty region first, then what used to happen, you'd get one in the South Island and then you get one in the middle. Now, the, the law, the natural law, is changing a little bit, whether it's uh, because of manipulation, I'm not sure, but, you know, uh, it can change, the laws can change, uh, and it appears that they have, and it does look like that it's the Bay of Plenty region or the north, northeast coast, then it goes uh, into the middle region. And we're talking on uh, Blenheim, uh, on the South Island, and around Wanganui, north of Picton, around that region as well. So right. that's, that's an indicator for me for, for the earthquakes side of right. things. Right, so and of course, Seddon, Seddon where there, there was a small quake this morning, um, that's just above uh, where the Pacific Plate comes in. Mm -hmm. It travels down the east coast of New Zealand on the seaboard and then it comes in just above where I am in Kaikoura and between Seddon and Kaikoura is where the Pacific Plate rolls in and then down the Alpine Fault Line. Well, that, that, that's where you'll see them. Now, Yado, um, thank you for that. Thank you for letting us know how, how you look at these things. As I understand it, you roll completely from the heart. You don't use other people's work to um, follow the indicators here. You didn't know that Hart was, was even screaming until um, until we had let you know that. Now, prior to the Gisborne quakes, I was a hell of a mess. And, you know, some people are antennas for these things, and it looks like, unfortunately, I'm one of those people. I had the worst headache I have had in my life. Now, I don't get headaches. Now, these indicators for me are very real. When we went through the Christchurch quakes, these things were happening to us a lot. Now, okay, so I get a screaming headache and I have to go and lie down, get into a quiet room, which usually drags on a, a really random sleep. Like, I will 
just fall over sleeping for an hour. And uh, <clears throat> another indicator to me is when my dog starts limping. She's, you know, she's not very old, but she's her joints swell and she gets it's so painful for her that she literally can't move. And and these things, these are excruciating to watch. I mean, you know, they can have me, but they can't have my family. So we're beginning to get quite a lot of information between us all to, you know, help us uh, know when these things are, are going on. Yes, um, that's the good part about, at this point in time, technology can be our greatest friend, but also, as we see, that it can be used against us at this point in time uh, until we learn to cooperate with each other, to work with each other, work from the heart. Uh, we're going to learn a lot through this. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that really um, is very unfortunate. But one of them is when we get those indicators, it, it does affect our frequencies as such. And that there are certain ways, certain things that can be done to, to help in, in some way change those frequencies. The greatest frequency, as I keep on saying, um, is being in the heart. It's not always that easy to be a holy person, though. Uh, and when I say holy, I don't mean religious as such. It, it transcends religion. But this is what we're striving for. We're striving for a transition. A lot of people can, will go into the area, perhaps, of energies at this point in time. A lot of people were, were very excited about a, a DVD that came out I don't know, about five, six years ago, called The Secret. And it was this amazing DVD talking about energy and how you can think this and how you can think that and how you can manifest. It was, in just my very humble opinion, a very unfortunate uh, thing, but perhaps a gentle transition for humanity to uh, understand that when we're working with a frequency, the frequency is much more than our mind. And, you know, when we think something, it's not necessarily going to manifest in the way that we, we want it. You know, I think there was, in one instance, they sat in a pretend car and just thought that they had the car and all of that type of stuff. And, you know, wow, instant manifestation. In fact, um, there was another rather well-known researcher who said that we're going to be in the time of instant manifestation and we're actually supposed to be in that. Now, instant manifestation does not come from the mind. Because the mind itself, when you hear the word Mayan, that means an illusion. A Mayan yes. is, is an illusion. So it's not something that we can manifest in the mind. We can do work on it, but that's not where it happens. It happens in our core being of what we really are. So we can think all we want about the riches and all of that type of stuff, but what happens is that it caused greed. Now, greed is the main part of manifestation until you truly come from your center, until you truly come from the heart. So with this DVD came a lot of greed, came a lot of stuff that, that people really weren't ready for. And they say, hang on a second, why isn't it working? Because look, I'm thinking of this, I'm thinking of the car, I'm thinking of yes. money, 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 money. Whoops, you're not thinking of the right thing. It, well, it, it's not the thinking side of things. It's the manifestation of greed. It's the manifestation of not fixing yourself up first. Then you can truly come from a space of manifestation. Now, that's the manna. That's the food from heaven, not from the mind. So whereas we may be in a time of instant manifestation, that's the reason why we have to come from the heart and not get carried away with this instant gratification with um, a lot of the negative stuff that is going on because the more we pour that into our mind, the more we're actually going to manifest it. So, yeah, it's like, for instance, being in the dark and then chanting the word, I'm not scared, I'm not scared, I'm not scared. But your true inner being that is being manifested in your physical form, here's the word scared, because that's what you really are. Yes. And you're manifesting that type of stuff. Until you are truly not scared, then you can manifest um, and that's the same with the greed, same with all of this stuff. It's been a diversion. Uh, it's been an illusion. All of these, the things that are going on now can be a gift because the gift is energy. It's a living energy and life begets life. It can't do anything else but give. We take that energy on every second of every minute of every hour of every day 
and continuously. If we choose to use it, we use it up in greed, we use it in anger, we use it in all of those types of stuff, then we lose our energy. Okay, but remember life gives. So if we get that energy, and remember it's coming in every moment of, of every day, if we then stand within our heart, if we have love, we're actually building that energy. Instead of spending it on fear, oh no, this, oh no, that, we're holding it and it's growing. It can't do anything else but grow. That is the living energy. That is electricity. That is uh, the hidden electricity. That's that's the truth of what is happening. With and, and the, the, yes, Sorry, sir. Yaro, this is so right. I, I mean, every soul's here on the planet to be loved. And with, with the advent of the secret, and there was much missing out of that. Yes, indeed, there, there, you know, certainly there, there was a lot in that book. But, but it was, it was taking you back to the mind and the, the, the Illuminati's trying to, really trying to create, you know, a separateness from God, you know. Um, and this, yeah, well, what I, I don't even really like to acknowledge this so-called Illuminati. Uh, side of things as well. It's not that I don't see that they are, are there. It's just adding to, to their energy. For those that think that your government is trying to hide the truth, that's not, that's not real. We ourselves are hiding the truth. They're just playing along with the game. We are allowing that truth to be hidden from us. It's us that is the main catalyst in this area. When we choose to be knowing or to know thyself, whatever you want to call it, then we step out of that manipulation game because we all want to be in the manipulation game. We want to be, what do you call it, uh, victims as such. And when we say the government is the cause of this, the government is the cause of that, we're agreeing to the victim game. But when we say, look, I, I choose not to play this game anymore, I, I choose to find out what's going on, Okay, you're knocking on the door there, and then I choose to actually be that change. Now, that change means that we don't manipulate anybody, we don't cheat, we don't lie, we don't steal. There you have the key to getting out of the system. For the, the Occupy movement, good, gentle steps for humanity, but I know there are a lot of individuals who can see beyond this, and it's another manipulation. It's another gathering of spirits who still quite don't know how to get out of there. They, they want to voice their opinion. But the greatest voice will be heard from your heart. That is totally being the change. If you don't want any of this manipulation, if you don't want any of this, all of this stuff that's going on, you yourself have to make sure that none of it is in your life. And that's the profoundness of what is happening with you now. That is the giving of life because we're in a living energy. As soon as we acknowledge that, as soon as we welcome that energy in, as soon as we change and be the change, then we're going to see even far more profound change than, than what is happening now. That's the good part of seeing the stuff that is blatantly going on, but making sure that we don't be part of it. Another thing is the, um, the corporate dog food that is passed off as the convenient food, whether you call it uh, McDonald's or anything like that, you know, if you really want true living energy, you don't eat that corporate dog food and be manipulated and dulled down again. Now, that's on a chemical level. It also affects the physical level too. This dead food will not feed your soul. There's a lot of people, unfortunately, in denial with this, and this is probably one of the most important things that is overlooked in this movement. Uh, if you're a truther, if you're still killing, then you're still part of the deception. And this may uh, ruffle a lot of feathers, and I don't hate anybody, and I'm not sending any hate out to anybody. I'm sending love out with this and telling you how it is. This is the reality. If you are still killing animals, if you are still eating and partaking of corporate dog food, then you are still part of the cause of what's going on. Can you imagine, uh, if you believe in karma even, that if you're killing, you're still building an energy of killing within your body, whether it's seemed to be okay to eat uh, one animal to another animal, it's actually not. It doesn't honour living energy. So the greatest thing that is happening at this point in time is an awakening to the self and how 
powerful we are with that. We ourselves can make the change, but it has to start with us first. Remember, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things that are going on as far as dulling us down, and food is part of that. Food is a very important part of that because that's what we actually welcome into this sacred temple of ours. It goes into our body. So there's a lot of things to ponder on and to step up with our understanding of what energy is. Agreed. I absolutely agreed. I mean, our dear friend Joy would call uh, McDonald's McPoisons. And, you know, she would share a story that, um, you know, when she was very, very ill, having major back problems and, and all these things, all she did to heal herself was take those things out of her life and, and start living with living foods you know you can you can eat crackers all you like or you're never going to lose the weight you want to lose because at the end of the day you're eating something that's not living it's it's baked it's fried it's you know um people people certainly need to get a grasp on the health issue one of favorite people in that movement of course is is mike from natural news and he pushes it's very hard you know, people choose to eat meat or they choose not to eat meat. But, you know, start with start with getting all this rubbish out of your life. I mean, it's very hard for the Americans. We've got a, an awful lot of U.S. listeners here tonight. But um, it's very, very hard for them where most of their food sources, their live food sources have been taken away from them. You know, I was speaking to a woman today in the U.S. Uh, and the topic was, of course, milk and the pasteurization of milk and, and, and what this is doing to us. And someone said, well, just, just get raw milk. And she said, well, we can't. We can't. Well, what am I going to do? Put a cow in my flat? Because this is how deep this has gone, particularly in the United States. Everything's GMO'd. You know, the, the living has been taken out of everything. And, and my heart goes out to them. I mean, we're, we're now in the process of going through this in New Zealand. They're trying to change the laws here. Also, to, to be in line with the United States. I know that you know, they'll have a hard time doing that in Aussie. Some of the best food sources in the world are coming out of Australia and that you're very blessed with. There are a lot of people here listening tonight that just simply don't have access to these living food sources. Uh, they need a whole new education, absolutely. But uh, where do you suggest they start with the, that, Yado? The re-education uh, is very important. I'm probably not the, the best person to uh, ask about dairy foods and that type of stuff. To really be re-educated, you need to look at what you're putting in your mouth. Now, we know that babies need milk to grow, okay? Undeniable, but it's human milk that they need. We really have to get out of that belief system of we need baby milk all the way through our lives uh, to grow. We actually don't. The milk itself contains hormones and that in it to create the mucus flow and if you have a look at calves, you know, we're not calves, we're, we're humans. We really shouldn't be drinking cow's milk, number one. I know that that rides against the uh, dairy industry, and I'm sorry about that. We're looking at the truth here, and the truth is that that's another system that we've been duped by. We don't actually need milk. We're not babies anymore. Only babies have milk. Grown up, you don't need milk. Getting back to the properties of milk, there's a lot of properties in there. When you see a calf out in the field, you'll see that its nose is running. That's the properties in the milk to continue the mucus flow through the nose because there's pollens and seeds that can get caught up in the calf's nose itself. And they can die from that if it's not cleared. So you've got a lot of mucus flow coming from that. And if you're into excessive dairy, you're going to have a lot of mucus flow. The other thing is that the hormones in that that is in milk is for very quick growth of bones. And you have a look at a calf that grows into a cow. Uh, it's a very quick, quick process. Should not be in the human system at all. Now we're not at this point in time even touching on um, keeping cows in a, a barbed wire fence, which we may see a reflection in karma of keeping humans occupied in a, a barbed wire fence. Here, here. Look, that, that's karma, and, and that's another issue once again, but all I'm trying to um, talk about here is the facts of it should not be in the body. It dulls the system down, and that's why there's so much money, and you know, you're talking about millions and millions and millions of dollars spent on duping us with advertising on the dairy industry 
and also the meat industry. You know, meat is dead. It has uh, cadaverin in it, which actually breaks down dead um, body tissue. We put that in our body and it's breaking it down. Somebody who is overweight from eating uh, meat is not carrying around their own weight. They're carrying around dead animal. There's so much that uh, people really need to readdress. If we're in a truth of movement, we really have to look at what we're doing every day. That's the truth of movement. Not going out and protesting and all of that, that's fine. But unless you are the change, unless you are yes. harming any living being, then the harm won't come to you. But if you are still harming living beings, we were not built to eat meat. Please, those who are at this point in time wanting to get agitated, please listen to where I'm coming from here. Listen to the agitation that is happening within you too because we may be very close to an answer. It's only when the buttons are pushed that the light is turned on. So please look at why this may agitate you. What are your senses addicted to? Are you addicted to having blood? You know, once again, I don't like to um, acknowledge Illuminati stuff, but, you know, this blood sacrifice and yes. ritual and all of that type of stuff. If we are putting blood, flesh into our mouths and swallowing it, guess what we're doing? We are still partaking of that blood ritual. Ritual. And that's, that's no better than what these folk are, are doing. And, in fact, we are their cattle, you know, if you subscribe to the information that is out there about these folk. Also, just on the milk issue, thank you very much. It's helped clear something up for me. We recently took milk out of our diet simply because I was refused to pay $6 for a pint of it now. And, you know, we're in New Zealand. We are the dairy capital of the world. Uh, big corporates are built around this. Say no more. But, um, my, you know, I have a daughter who, right from a tiny tot, would just be constantly sneezing and constantly her eyes would water and it was just a constant with her. She would go to school, she would come home exhausted from sneezing all day. Now, you know, we've gone through batteries of tests and things like this. Well, we just decided to be the change and took the milk out of the diet and bang. This girl, I haven't. the only time I hear her sneeze now is if she succumbs to an ice cream. And then that happens the next day. So your your explanation of the mucus w within the calves fits perfectly here. We realise that it just shouldn't have in her body, certainly not in mine. And you don't need milk. I mean, anything that you need milk for, you replace it with water. We, we still bake, but we don't yeah. need the milk. We, you know, we still have uh, the, you know, odd pasta that, that requires milk in a recipe where we just replace it again with water. And that's an interesting thing that requires within a recipe. You know, we're addicted to being babies still. It's a number that is being done on us, you know. So while we're addicted to uh, wanting the baby milk, we're still being manipulated there. It's such an important thing, especially for those who are in the truth of movement. Please go much deeper than your emotions on this because if we're to make a breakthrough, this is where we will make a breakthrough. There is so much billions of dollars put into advertising to dupe us with this industry, with the meat industry as well. Please have a look at what it does to the body. Please have a look at how you feel afterwards. For those who find it hard, do the transition gently, but acknowledge that it, it is not good to kill. It is not good to make animals suffer because it's coming around. My beautiful brothers and sisters, it is coming around. If we harm other living beings, then it's going to happen to us as well. And, and we're back to the, the whole point of this exercise, be the change you want to see. You know, different people can do different things. I hear a lot of, I can't do that, I can't do this. For instance, you know, get on a bicycle instead of paying the oil companies for the privilege of, of driving around in your cars. Or better still, why don't you get out there and, and source some biofuels? Yes, that's the one, you know, we grow it. Biofuel yes. is grown, you know, it, it doesn't have to be the waste oil either. We can actually grow it. Whoops, if we can grow it, that means we can uh, have farms and build co-ops and have our own petrol stations. You know, Gandhi, this beautiful being, said, be the change. He saw what was going on with the salt and said, hang on a second, we don't have to get it from there. We can make it ourselves. 
Now that was a revolution. We are now at another revolution where if we get enough farms together in a co-op, we have our own industry for fuel. That's how close we are. That's, you know, what an amazing thing to do, to grow your own fuel. It can be done. It can be done. We are very close to realising this. Then we don't have to be manipulated by governments who say, look, we really need to sell our oil. We really need to bleed the earth of its living forces, of its vital forces. Um, We need to take uranium out of the, the earth. You know, this is a living planet that we're on. This is her vital forces. When we take from her, we're going to have very severe consequences. So here we have the opportunity now, biodiesel, go for it, please. This is the next stage. Get co-ops going, contact uh, farms and and let them know, look, it is possible to grow clean fuel. Eventually, you know, we've got solar stuff as well but at this point in time biofuel is the way to go it doesn't hurt the earth and it's another gentle progression where we won't be manipulated as they say uh, by oil companies which is they're being manipulated also it goes on a much higher level than what we fully understand at this point of time but that's another step in, in the right direction yeah know here in the united states they pass all sorts of laws that keep us from doing a lot of things that we need to do um for instance like even trying to grow other fuels um they actually make it where you have to have certain licenses and permits to do anything with that kind of outcome and as far as gardens and stuff they have passed laws in these new legislations that we can't grow gardens you can't even think about it here in my home city we even have some co-op did matter of fact i know they're not even in existence anymore since our flood in 2008 this being a big farming community around here it you can't even find those honest sheds on the corner of farms anymore that uh, you can just drop uh, a buck or two and grab a couple ears of corn of course i guess we're not supposed to eat that anymore either but uh, being the corn state we look forward to our corn on the cob and but there's just no more of that anymore around here, especially in a farming state. They have It's either by our rash weather that is taking care of these issues or it's by the rash laws that they're creating. For instance, uh, I was craving some, as we call it, live food the other day. And I went to a, a local grocery store, which <laughs> you go to Walmart. And um, although their produce area is vast, just looking at the food, it's smaller. It's not even the vibrant colors that they need to be. And it's really, as I walked through, it was like a major turnoff as far as even wanting to be hungry. So I kind of resort in the crackers. Um, But it's hard. It's getting to the point where it's really hard to even find fresh food. Now, when I was going through some of these places... um, like, for instance, uh, you don't see a Dole banana or a sun-kissed orange anymore. Some of these sticker labels are actually, they're shipping the food in from other countries. We don't even grow our own food here anymore. It's, it's coming from Mexico or, but there's, I've just noticed that the co-ops have disappeared. The uh, freshness of the food is disappearing. So where does that leave us? Okay, Certainly. That, <laughs> yeah. Just. Just on the corn issue too, Kat, I, you know, I read recently that they have made a type of corn that is sterilising our men. Now, when I read that, I was just, I was horrified. I, I, you know, and I, and I did search it. I went back to the source on that. It's horrific. In New Zealand, we have the most sterile population of men in, on the planet. It's, it's a fact. So where are these things coming from? Look to what's going in your mouth first. Yeah, well, you can see the food issues coming along. Um, for instance, um, something I've noticed is looking at the the newest generations coming forth. They're getting shorter. Not everyone, but the percentage of people are getting shorter. I don't know what that's about, but I, I still consider it our food, our food resource. Yes, and there's some areas in the world where there are only females being born. The female-to-male ratio now is, um, you know... A, to th- three quarters to one, which is really, really quite shocking. Mm. Very. When, when we're looking at food with this, it's ourselves, uh, it's us that allowed it to happen, unfortunately. When you, you look at the word law, law means fa- fable. You know, folklore means a uh, folk fable. Uh, mm-hmm. So those laws that are being passed are just fables. When we realise that there's a greater law, a living law, 
we've got to wake up to that um, and start growing again. And it, they can't make it illegal to grow your own food, regardless of whether they're past a fable or not. They cannot stop you from growing your food. Um, and I think this is part of it, is stepping into that power and realising that the laws, as long as we're listening to these laws, as long as we're obeying these laws or these fables, as you put it, then then we're buying into the whole program. We're, we're still babies. We're still sucking cow's milk. Yeah, um, exactly. You know, and sure, it's not, I mean, you can appreciate that Kat doesn't want the military rolling her door down because she's got, she decided to put some biofuel in her backyard. So, you know, we have to be creative about how we're going to do this. People can grow indoors if they must, you know, there's, uh, if you're in, in small apartments, you know, you can set up window gardens, you know, it's just start, just practice, just, just begin with something. The superfoods are really, really easy to grow. You know, alfalfa is, is an incredible food. These things you can grow in pots in your window in your home if it's impossible for you to do it any other way. Certainly, uh, though, that some very many people are up against a, a lot harder, you know, legislations than, than we are, Yaro, and we have to feel blessed for that, that we are down here, and until they start making these fable changes, um, you know, we may not appreciate what others in the world are facing. Right. Uh, exactly. There's some pretty horrific stuff that has gone on, obviously, with food. Uh, you know, we look at the, um, the Monsanto stuff. It's a crime against humanity. It's a crime against the earth and all creatures. So, you know, we're looking at monumental proportions as to what is uh, a, a crime, a true crime. But once again, we need to step out of that um, the victim mentality. And even if it's just growing, dare I say, mung beans, you know, mung beans are one of the greatest survival foods that you can have. You, know, you can, uh, they can store for well over two years. Yes. They're very easily grown, so you can grow your own even, or you can buy your own. All it takes is a little bit of water, and all of a sudden you've got one of a, a, an extremely nutritious meal. That's a superfood. There are certain things we can change now, but we need to want to change them because there's an addiction to processed foods. There's an addiction to all of that which is very hard to break if we're not truly willing to break it. Remember processed, pro means for something. When you're pro something, you're for something. And cess means death, cessation, mm -hmm. cease to be. So they're actually telling us that this processed food is for death. When we have a look at the cereals that we've all been living on for the past uh, 20 years, you know, these are the real serial killers. There is stuff in that that goes way beyond uh, processed food and, and what should be put in processed foods like heavy metals and, and stuff that causes Alzheimer's, stuff that causes uh, diabetes. You, you've got all of this stuff that we need to stop taking. We, we, we really need to reintroduce the living energy into our system. And that's, you know, it can start with just by introducing simple, humble food again, uh, mung beans. You know, you can sprout it in a jar. Guess what? It's not that hard. I agree with you, Yato, but Nick, it goes back to something else I've been seeing here, especially in the United States. It's gotten to be, and I almost believe that this is all part of the giant plan as well. The society has been on a runaway muck. Um, now, if you take that where people are more apt to go for the processed food to the drive-in to grab the family meal um, from a McDonald's. Society here now is based on where both parents almost need a job to keep the household together. Where now time is now an issue to everybody here in America. And it's become a point of a convenience. Ah, exactly. um, yes. yes, in a time... Allowed that to happen. We allowed it to happen. Yes, where even to that convenience, being on a lack of a time schedule to sit down and actually, whether we take those GMO foods from the grocery store or not, and actually try to make the time to even have a sit down dinner with the family is an issue. Um, now we have the family scrambling for every little bit of time to they'll like 
five minutes in between a shift, they'll stop at the McDonald's and pick up the family meals. Or it's gotten to be a point of, I don't know if it's a case of depression, but I see more parents coming into convenience stores and grocery stores. And as you look at the carts going out the door, it's it's the pre-made food. It's um, the frozen food. It's I, you see less and less of the fresh food, and and no one has time to sit down and make a fresh meal anymore. And, and that that is something is so seriously developed here as a society, as a family structure. That okay, most definitely, and we're seeing it here in Australia as well. Now, while listening to you, one of the main things was we're we're losing time. We're losing time. We don't have enough time. Yeah. And guess what? We've manifested. We're now at the point now where we don't have much time left. At all. Uh, what have we done? We ourselves have chosen that for a reason. Now we're to turn it around and say, no, quality. Quality is the most important thing. Quality incorporates time. Quality incorporates that we be exceptional, that we don't fast chuck our food you know, down our mouths um, and, and hope that it hits the right spot because it will not. You know, what we're going to see is even more sickness from these, these foods. You spoke of depression. The foods are a catalyst of depression. These foods will feed your depression. So we need to readjust ourselves. If we're in a, a truther movement, we need to address this situation of still eating corporate dog food and that's exactly what it is. It's chuck it down you know, um, and, and hope that it hits the right spot. How can we dial it down even further? We'll put sugar in it and we'll yeah. put all stuff in it. And, you know, you're looking at a deadly cocktail to feed depression, to feed death. That's processed food. And what do we do? We go, we go and reach for a jar of Prozac to, to <laughs> help lift us again. So it's quite well, extraordinary. Now, you know, now we're into the Medi-Kill system uh, and the, uh, that whole area there is, is another area I, I don't think we've got time to go into, but that's another very, very important issue of sense gratification, gratification of getting it now. I want to be fixed now. I don't want to address the issue. Whoops. Okay. We are looking at the ill and capture industry. It's not the pill and capsule. It's the ill and capture industry. They have got us. Okay, by that, and we're bowing down to them and saying, "Oh, yeah, we can get rid of this just uh, straight away by having a pill." No, that is capturing you into illness, and you're going to be paying for the rest of your life on these things. Get back to what is living, please. Very, very important. If you're in the truth and movement, please address this. Get back to what is living. Get back to what is real. Okay, if we can just hold that thought, Yaro, getting back to real and uh, the medical system. Don't waste tomorrow Wishing about yesterday Of change, 
Welcome back. That was a song that Yato wrote that you just listened to. And now that we're back, we're going to go back and discuss a little bit about the medical part of uh, what we were discussing before the break. Um, Yato, do you have anything else you could touch base on that? Well, um, you know, looking at the whole system, obviously um, you know, we, we can have fun with it and all of that, but the truth is within the words themselves, uh, words a very strong manifestation in that way, especially ones that have been conditioned to be used for so long. For instance, when did um, healing, H-E-A-L, become hell? And the truth is we call it a health care system, not a heal care system. So when was that twist happened? When did H-E-A-L, when was that supposed to be pronounced um, hell? So straight away we know we're in a system that is not going to look after us. It's a hell care system. Um, you can look at all of the words from the medical system, the medical, uh, medicinal, senile is in the actual medicinal. Um, even you can break them down, even the first part of the word medi is me die. We've got to change it and the simple way of changing it is to be the change by not being subservient to a system that is trying to kill us to a system that is trying to dull us, but we start emulating life. We put living energy back into our body, living energy through our eyes as to what we see, living energy through our ears as to what we hear, living energy 
through our mouth as to what we eat and taste, living energy to what we feel. It is a simple case of uh, be good, say good and do good. If you really want to be in the truth and movement, if you really do want to make change, then it's, it is a simple case of be good, do good and say good. Be the change. Don't be subservient to a system that is trying to dull you down. But remember, it's not your governments that is trying to hide something from you. It's us, ourselves, because we're not addressing it. They're simply being the puppets, allowing it to happen. Indeed, and, and you're back to the victim mode again, aren't we? Uh, there, there's a lot ahead of us, but we can do it, folks. There is a lot ahead of us, and um, a lot of the people in this so-called truth and movement know that there is a transition coming, and this is it. It is the ownership of every single thing that's gone on, of saying, okay, I won't do that anymore. I will now step into a place of kindness. I'll step into a place of, of true leadership. That is where it's at. It's not, you know, grab your gums and pitchforks and, and you know, hang on a second, the gates of heaven are going to close if you've gone and done that. It, it is a case of being the change. Of If you don't like somebody pointing a gun at you, then get rid of your gun. Use something that is far more powerful. That's that living energy within your heart. And I know that what is being faced in America at this point in time is horrific. We've seen this throughout history. It is horrific. But we've seen the greatest changes come about by people like Gandhi, who totally changed the system. We need to be that change. We need to be that living essence and aspire to be as what Gandhi, all of the people who have made change. And it really does start with ourselves, doesn't it, Yato? Yeah. How empowering is that? How, If you're looking for hope, don't look outside yourself. Because it can get so overwhelming that you don't think there's any hope. Yet the hope, it is within yourselves to change. Okay? And if you find change hard, then you know, do it gradually, but do it now. Every single thing that you don't like, if you don't like killing, then make sure that you start addressing the issues in every single way in your life to make sure that you don't invite killing into your life. And that's not just killing humans, that's killing anything. Do it gradually. But there is the key to your freedom. That is within yourself. And and when people, you know, are looking to make changes, well, just look at the people that are around you. You know, what you're surrounded with are mirrors of yourself, aren't they? And and these are the things that you have to address. Like you, you mentioned earlier, the pushing of buttons, you know, for anyone that was getting riled up about your comments about meat, uh, that is absolutely, you know, a mirror, an issue that needs to be addressed. When you do open your doors to change, it floods in. Oh, by crikey. You are given, some would call them problems, others would call them opportunities to make changes. Look at what is around you. Look at the vibrations around you. Look at what the people that you draw in, your friends, and then, you know, decide. If, if a behavior in one person is really irking you, then that's a behavior that you have to find in yourself. You have to dig deep to appreciate that that is why you're being shown this particular being. Very wise, exactly. If you want a peaceful planet, if you want a peaceful life, if you want a, a peaceful world, then you be the change. You make sure that the things that you are contributing to society with are inspirational, that they are of a peaceful, loving, kind nature. Uh, don't be duped by um, a revolution that can take you off into an area where you shouldn't be. Remember, killing is killing. Anger is anger. Anger can be used in the right way too. But getting back to uh, the true revolution is not out there. All it is, is, as you say, Rose, it's a mirror to say, hey, step up. There's so many things that can be touched on here because we are working with a living energy. And remember, it's that living energy that comes back to you that feeds you living inspiration. Or you spend it and it, it goes out of you. Well, something I've learned and I've, I've taken this to my life in general, Yato, is something I learned in managing, when I was managing restaurants and working with a vast array of young folks, old folks. And one thing that always stood true and seems to work oh, relentlessly, almost at 100%, is positive response begets positive 
reaction and same way with negative. The aura around you walking into a room with a bad attitude spreads like wildfire, just like bad advertisement. Same way when you walk into a room and you stand on a positive note, that spreads like wildfire as much. And it is a time to take ownership on everything and realize that the more positive we feed back into all other living things has that same positive reaction back. Most definitely. And, and, and I guess most importantly there, it's not what you think, it's what you are. It's what your living essence is and it's what you aspire to be. Not thinking. Thinking will not change the world. It is be participating and being the change that will change the world. Indeed. And, and, and that one was for uh, Kevin over there in the UK on the thinking issue. He had an experience recently where it, it became very obvious to him that thinking was one of the roots of our problem. Yeah, yeah definitely. It becomes top-heavy because we're always up in our mind, the Mayan, the illusion. When something is top-heavy, it's going to tumble, it's going to fall, it's going to tumble into its humbling, the tumbling humble, where it can then be embraced by the heart because once we're humbled, then we can truly come from the place that we, we wanted to originally come from. And when that heart truly embraces the mind, you feel the love, it, it just it wells out. There is nothing on this earth that can touch that feeling. When you are finally humbling or humbled enough to let the heart speak rather than the mind, rather than the ego, letting that love Letting the love embrace the heart, letting the love embrace the mind, then you'll get the answers. Then you'll be that true being that you, you, you wish to be. Well, isn't it true, too, that, that you know, science has discovered that, in fact, the heart does have a brain? So, you know, those that are thinking with their mind, well, there is, a, there is another mind, and it's, perhaps this brain has become much, much smaller because we no longer use it. Yeah, very interesting, yeah. All right, moving ahead. So we've touched on some pretty interesting subjects here, my friend. Um, the your wordplay is is quite fantastic, and and there it is, folks. You know, you've just got to disassemble words to to see the real truth. The, the veils are everywhere, and it's right under our noses. Oh, most definitely. With the um, with the new language, that's once again getting into the heart because the the word heart does have hear in it. So you're hearing from the heart. You're hearing the real language, you're not seeing it because these eyes can deceive us with the way things are spelt, but it's the way that they're pronounced, the way that we hear them is the undercurrent of what's really going on. Sometimes we can hear somebody say something to us which is appears to be kind and loving and we'll walk away thinking, oh, that doesn't feel right, something's just happened. It's learning to hear now from the heart and even when you see the shape of the uh, symbolic heart, that's two ears put together. So hearing, bringing the two, letting the two become the one again, coming back into the centre and hearing for the first time, and that's where you'll hear the love. That's where you'll hear uh, being able to respond to something that perhaps doesn't appear to be so kind or does appear to be kind. It's still being able to respond with love, not um, reacting as such, but still being able to respond with love. There is so much in our language. It's awesome, and, and that's another story altogether of learning to hear from the heart. Standard, they'll know that there's a play on words, but it's far greater than a play on words. It, it, it's something that changes your life. It's something that changes the way you see things. It changes your, your perspective. It connects another part of the brain which hasn't been used before. The language of the heart is, uh, is another story. There's something I read back, um, it's like an ancient story, something about it was almost preferred that we don't use words because they are mesmerizing and almost enchanting mm -hmm. to the point where all meaning will be lost and got worse if we even wrote down words. So they've talked about this many moons ago. Ah, okay. Well, well, that's the profoundness of what it is. You know, we're at a time now where we've used so many words and you see the latest fashion of words in the advertising and then all of a sudden, whole communities who have never used those words before are using those words. There is a hypnotizing of, of this aspect. Uh, starts off when we're asleep, when we go off into um, 
some people call it dreamland, uh, there's a hypnotizing that starts there and that's your fashion, whether it's the fashion of words or whether it's the fashion of what we wear, fashion of, of how we feel. But the, the hypnotizing side of things is a true aspect, as you say, of what happens with the use of words. Yes, very much so. Like in the United States, um, for instance, now that I've talked to different people from all over, everybody kind of has their own slang. And one thing I find since I've been traveling around the United States, language from one end of the United States to the other can change from coast to coast and have what one word will mean, mean on the West Coast to some will be a totally different meaning on the East. So it's like it's like a new new Babylon we have going on here. Spot on. Yes. There'll be, there'll be a profoundness of words and nobody will understand what the other is saying. One meaning for one side will be total opposition to the other. Yes. Which is why the language of the heart is good, because you can break that down then and you stop the manipulation of, of being uh, hypnotised by words. You hear them instead of see them. You feel them. And coming from the heart, it's important to feel. That's where you feel the love. Yeah, and a sim simple bad statement or something could change one's day from the next. So we're mm -hmm. going back to the respect thing, even, for others, um, and, and being positive. Yes, yeah, definitely. It, it, it's more than being positive. It, it's, it's living that, that positiveness. It, it's being, once again, being that change or being, being the truth. If you want to speak truth... Please make sure that you are the truth. You know, if you want peace, then please be peace. That's how profound this is. You need to be living it. Be exceptional. Now, that, that was interesting what you what you said there, Kat, uh, regarding the written word. Um, Dr. Emoto has done, he's the gentleman that has worked with the water and he's proven that um, certain vibrations, certain sounds, certain words will change the structure of water. Yes. If you write the word love on the bottle that you put in the fridge, evidently they've taken that and they've uh, put it under a microscope and, you know, you have a beautiful crystallization within that water. Whereas, you know, if you use the word hate, uh, you, you have a globbed up mess. So it's quite fascinating. There is some power in that. Oh, yeah, definitely, very much so. And it, it's on a, a much higher unconscious level when we're writing the word love that uh, makes the profoundness of energy change because if we could write love without thinking of what the implications are and then connecting to a, an unconscious or subconscious mind then it wouldn't make any difference but it's that all of a sudden knowing that love is a good vibration brings in that energy that allows that energy even just by seeing the word love there is a change that happens. So, yeah, look, with that uh, emoto, very profound things that I think most of humanity knew deep within their uh, subconscious. But it took a very knowing being, a very exceptional being, to bring it through. Uh, and his name, even, when you look at the emoto, you see the word emoto, which is emotion. You have the water, the emotions of the water. Uh, and that was pretty profound as well fact that Emoto was now talking about the emotions, the water of change. Yes, and I'm going to go write love on every one of my bottles of water right now. Indeed, and, and you know, just having that water, they say just having that water within your energy, within your aura, and, and focusing on it before you swallow it will, again, change the crystalline structure. And, and keep in mind, folks, that you, you can have a 100 people meditating or praying over a glass of water or you can just have one person but if that person is pure uh, you know is is working from purity with a deep sense of clarity the crystalline structure will be just as clear and pure as if it were a hundred people meditating very important what you have said yes yes and evidently from his research the the water is influenced immediately so yeah. it's not something that we have to wait to happen. Again, it's, it's pure manifestation, manifestation from the heart. It's That's immediate. Right. Yeah. The greatest conductor of electricity is water, something to ponder on. We ourselves are 70% water. Our brain is 90% water. So with the changing of the words, maybe we can, instead of wearing T-shirts with these manipulated labels, 
and fashion, we make our own labels. Uh, we become that cup and allow the new energies to, to flow in by having our own label, you know. Be yeah. exceptional, be loving, you know. It, it's This is the start right here today. This is where you begin. Indeed. Indeed. And, Very profound. And water, what, is one of the most one of the substances that is substantiating in life itself so go figure on the change you can make to it yeah. and and even you know this is a big issue at the moment right around the world with the fracking that's going on you know max egan is is the first to shout about this as soon as we start messing with the water table and the water this is our planet's memory her lifeblood and yes. and you know we have the audacity to be messing with that now and this just must stop yeah, most definitely, most definitely disgusting, greed, very short-sighted and extremely destructive. And most of us know it too on a deeper level, most of us know it, which is why we're getting a voice now against this. It should not be going on. Okay, well, um, there's there's a lot more to to the water. We've, we've discussed fracking until we're blue in the face uh, recently, so we will step aside of that one, but... Certainly, folks, once again, we're back to because we feel the need to power our homes and, and with natural energies that we have to annihilate, put more chemicals into our mother. And, and, and Gaia just wants to give. It's, it's the nature of nature. She is giving and loving and will constantly heal. But really, yes. how long can she do this? How long can we keep abusing her? And it is us. Like Yato has pointed out, it's not our government's time to get out of the victim mode and understand that it begins with us. Yeah, you know, if you want to go frack, then do it on your, your own being, your own body, and see what it's like, see what happens. Take the blood out of yourself. You know, we won't last too long. Put, put a hundred and however many chemicals into your own uh, life force and see, see how long uh, you'll stay happy and healthy. That's right. That's right. And isn't that what we're complaining about with the chemtrails, the same thing? Chemicals and all of that type of stuff, look, we're allowing that to happen within our own body. We're allowing by what, what we choose to eat, what we choose to see. You know, the, the amount of chemicals that happen from a, a movie that has murder in it. How crazy, how crazy are we to actually watch a video that has murder in it? What type of warped brain says, oh, look, you're an adult, so you're allowed to get it off by seeing murder and mayhem, but we'll make sure that we'll put an AO on it so that children won't watch it. Hang on a second. There's something very wrong with the system that says, look, you're an adult. You're allowed to be warped. You're allowed to um, totally destroy your, your chemical body, your integrity body, by watching this because you've allowed it in. So where do you go to from there? Once again, well, it's your own being. You are in charge of what is going on, and it starts with you. Nutrition. And that's goes absolutely in. right. When you make, when you make those, when you do make those changes, you start rejecting those things. And naturally, I mean, I can't stand it. I, I watched a, a movie last night called They Live, and fantastic movie made in. Well, it was a very B grade movie made in uh, 1988. We've uploaded it to our YouTube channel. I. I had to skip through a lot of the violence because that was what made it so B grade. It, you know, the violence had to be in there for the substance of the movie, whatever. We're just so reliant on this violence. It's in all this oh, rubbish that we view. And, yeah. and you know, but I mean, the, the part, the major part of the story was almost lost in that. You know, how where are we at if we can't, you know, have some regular Bill Cosby viewing? You know, it just doesn't <laughs> exist any longer. That's right. Once again, we'll get back to the truth of movement. You know, if you don't want violence out there, what type of videos are you watching? Do you think that it's good to be entertained by violence? Well, there's our reflection in society. We must think that it's good to be entertained by violence because we're seeing it there. We are in charge. We create this by actually living the way that we have lived. It's time to change. It's really, really time to change. And it changes with you. And if you keep a positive focus with that, you know, these words that, that we use create a natural crystalline structure. I mean, we, we are the majority of water. So, you know, just I guess we, we should all start looking at our language and, and how we choose to express ourselves. Yeah, yeah. We have the potential to 
be exceptional. Use it. Okay, Yado. Yeah. Uh, the, the, I there has been a number of questions as to why you use the one 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 frequently in your videos. You know, the time <laughs> of the videos might be one one one, or can can you um, expand a little on that for us? Oh yes, I've been accused of all things. <sighs> I've been accused of being part of that, um, the Illuminati or, or all of that with, by using that. But the simple thing is that just showing that 111 or 1111 can have love in it, you know, it doesn't all of a sudden have to mean this demonic thing. It, too much emphasis has been put on that now and it's, and it's the energy that is, is given to it, which is crazy. You know, um, numbers do not belong to anybody. There's certain parts of society that think that they own the numbers, that they think that they're powerful with numbers. Uh-uh. There is nothing more powerful than the number one. And that's the truth. Number one, me and my father are one. Whoa. Where two or more are gathered in my name, there I am. We are one. We are one together. That's the strength. That's the number. Now, you have other numbers that can mean all sorts of things. That's fine. Okay. But the problem is that it's taken people off and distracted them and they start putting energy into it and demonic energy and blah, blah energy and all of this type of stuff. No, I just put those numbers in there to say, look, we can do a video on this and you can see that it's just love. With uh, what was coming up, um, there was a lot of talk about 11, 11, 11 being the, what do you call it, the rapture. The, the portal, yeah. ascension. That's Ascension, right. another yeah. word for rapture, yes. Oh, my goodness. You know, and, and so many people were disappointed when they thought, thought, and that's the thing, they thought they were preparing themselves for this rapture. So all of a sudden it's like cramming for an exam, making sure that you, know, you, you get everything right. You should be getting everything right right now and, and preparing not just for a rapture that will happen at a time when nobody will understand and nobody will know, but preparing the body or pre-preparing the body by being that total thing that you think is going to take you off in rapture. What uh, we were discussing while off air there, some people being disappointed, you know, oh, I did so much in preparing myself for 11, 11, 11, waiting to be taken off, and now I'm depressed because I'm still here. Yes. Well, there yes. is the profoundness. Be that what you thought was 11, 11, 11. Be it because you are here now. That is your rapture. That is your holiness. That is your, your gift. The gift of life is being given to you so that you can live what you are cramming to be. You know, if you cram for an exam, you're going to forget the uh, answers to it afterwards when it really counts. Don't cram. Be it now, be that holiness, be that um, exceptionalness, uh, be that whatever you want to call it, be the change, but be that very thing that you're searching for. Don't wait for a number because the number yeah. will be done on you. Yes, indeed. And, and, you know, people sat around for that date. You know, I read blogs where you know, all these people were preparing and they were, they were meditating and praying and and doing what they thought were all the right things, and then the total disappointment when they woke up on the 12th and they were still here and they hadn't been taken away in, in their crafts and the world hadn't changed before their eyes. And again, this is, this is not taking responsibility for our being. Um, you know, it's, it's waiting for a God or someone right. else to come and exactly. take you away. Don't, don't wait on the world for change, you know, you be that change. The world, uh, the word wait means that you become heavy. It's a wait, you are waiting on the world, you're becoming heavy. Don't wait, be that change now. That's the energy, that's the gift that is being given right now. You know, for those that were disappointed uh, that they weren't taken off in rapture, well, where was your true essence? Shouldn't you still be in that state now? This is what the world needs. We don't need to be taken off into rapture. We need to bring that heaven down to earth now and create that here, here and now. Be that change. We can give in to 
something more We can let go or stay unsure We can be part of all there is We can be true to all we see We can be true to you, to me We can be everything 